The effective use of images and graphics is one of the things that sets apart PowerPoint heroes from PowerPoint zeros. In this screencast video, I'm going to be showing you a number of tips and tricks related to using graphics effectively in PowerPoint. Let's turn our attention to the PowerPoint interface. As you can see, I've opened the Working with Graphics example file, and you'll see a presentation of six slides, each slide with a graphic on it. And I want to show you some things that you can do using the graphic manipulation tools in PowerPoint to really make your presentations better. The first thing that I want to show you how to do is how to remove backgrounds. Often, uh, it may be better aesthetically in your presentation to have an image that is just the object of interest rather than the object of interest with a background. PowerPoint, thankfully, makes it really easy to remove backgrounds, particularly when those backgrounds are all of the same color. So to do that, we're going to select the image of this bird. We're going to click on Picture Tools, and you'll see over here the Remove Background option. If I click on that, PowerPoint is going to take its best guess at what I actually want to keep of this bird. Now you can see it's done a pretty good job, but there are still some areas in here where there's some blue around the bird's feathers that I probably don't want. So what I'll do is I'll use the Mark Areas to Remove tool, select that, and then I'll go through and just click these little blue areas. And sometimes you might have to click more than once in an area for PowerPoint to realize what it is that you're trying to do. Um, but as you grab more and more of those little pieces, it's going to do a better job figuring out what it is that's important to you in the picture and what it is that you do not want to be part of the picture. So we can go through and click. Now we got a part there that uh, we don't want to remove. So I can either hit uh, delete mark and delete that one or I can go back uh, and just hit the undo key. So we're going to keep trying to remove as much of the blue from this bird as we can. And a little bit of blue on a white background probably won't be that noticeable. We'll, we'll see once we're done. But if we can clean up these edges just as much as possible, we'll get a really nice clean looking bird out of the deal. Let's see if we can get that blue around the beak there, because that's rather noticeable. And looks like we're doing a pretty good job here. I think we're getting close. Could probably spend a little bit more time cleaning that up. But once you have the areas selected that you want to keep and the areas selected that you want to remove, just click Keep Changes. And all of a sudden, we have a really nice bird with no blue background. And we can use that image uh, wherever we want to on our slides. So that's removing backgrounds. Alternatively, if you do have images with a background like this, I'm going to go back all the way so we have uh, our image with the background. We'll just do discard all changes. Now, one thing that always looks better than just an image with a frame in uh, on your slide it always looks better to frame or shadow your image in some way. So to do that, picture tools, you have a lot of options here for frame. Remember the principle of consistency. So whatever you use on one image, you should use on all of your similar images. So I'm a big fan of a simple drop shadow rectangle. That just makes it a little bit out of the image. It gives your slide a little bit of depth. So as a general rule, either remove backgrounds or put a frame or shadow on rectangular images for a more professional look. Another thing you should know how to do, uh, this is a great image of a fish, might be something that we'd want to use in a presentation. Uh, but one thing that I see often are images like this that appear right in the middle of the slide. This is a problem because down here we have this really odd crop line where it's obvious that this image is cropped but it's cropped right in the middle of our slide. 
So there are a couple of things you can do. One, you can take that image and move it to the edge of your slide. And that way, when you view it as a presentation, you're just going to see uh, right there the picture coming in from the so side of the screen. And those top lines are much less noticeable. Uh, you can also, maybe if it's in the wrong position, use the rotate tool. To do that, select your image. And you'll see at the top center, there will be a, a rotate button. So once you see your mouse turn into that circle, you can click there and you can rotate this image however you want. So maybe in the case of this fist, it would be better for it to come off of the edge like this. So that when you view it in presentation mode, you've got a nice fist coming out of the side of the screen. Great. So now you know how to rotate images. We do have a little bit of a background here. So we probably would want to use the remove background tool. Uh, in this case, it doesn't quite know what it is that we want to keep. So to fix this, we're going to drag the edges of the image to uh, the outside edges of the hand. And it looks like in this particular case, once I have this selected, PowerPoint is doing a pretty good job removing the background. Looks like there might be a little bit around here that I could mark areas to remove and see how well it does that. There we go. That looks a little better. And I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So we're going to keep changes. And now we have no white background. We have a great uh, fist image. And if you have it over other images or over the text, now you'll see that you can just see the text right through the fist. And we don't have the problem of the white background. So that's really nice. Sometimes it might not be appropriate for you to take an oddly cropped image like this and have it come from the side of your screen. If that's the case, either find an image that isn't oddly cropped, or, like we did previously, put a frame around it. Okay. If you frame that image, uh, and to do that, we might have to actually use a picture border. We're going to set an outline with black, and we're going to set the weight a little bit bigger. If we do something like this, uh, then we get an image that has a border around it so that odd crop line is no longer as distracting because it just looks like it's in a picture frame. So odd crop lines, you either move them to the edge of the slide or you surround them with a frame. Let's move on to our next image. Here's another great example. We have an odd crop line at the bottom, so we can either move him to the edge of our screen like this uh, or we can put a frame on him. We could also uh, remove the background since this he's got the not quite white background. We're going to use the picture tool, remove background. Again, we're going to select all of him. And now we have some areas that shouldn't be removed that it thinks should be. So here, we're going to mark areas to keep. And you can click and drag across these two spots that it wanted to remove because PowerPoint is just basically choosing what to remove based on color similarity. So once we've selected those areas we want to keep, we can just hit Keep Changes. Now we have a nice image and uh, it's in good shape for throwing to the edge of a slide. And we can talk about being a detective or something like that on this particular slide. Sometimes there may be, it may be the case that you have an image that is more than you really want. So we can use the crop tool to make the image smaller uh, by cutting off the edges. So to do that, we'll select the image. We're in picture tools. We're going to click on crop. And now we have all these little black uh, handles around the outside of the image. So to crop the image, we grab those black handles and drag in. So I can make the image no wider than the actor himself. I'm going to get it down to his hat. And maybe I don't want quite so much of his coat. Maybe I really am just interested in having his head appear on my slide. So we'll just crop it all the way down. A really nice, tight crop of the character's head. And then we'll click on the crop key. And now our image is just the head. So I can move him down so he's hiding in the corner of my slide. So you know how to crop images, you know how to remove backgrounds, you know how to frame images. 
one thing that's sometimes nice, sometimes you have a, an actor image like this, and it would be perfect if the actor was just looking in the other direction for your purposes on this slide. The first thing we'll do is we'll remove the background on here, and it's done a pretty good job. We want the whole actor's head, and we want his feet. Uh, so PowerPoint did a pretty good job removing that white background, so we're going to do Keep Changes. Uh, but maybe we want him looking the other way. You can use the Rotate tool here to flip horizontal or flip vertical. We're going to flip him horizontal, and then we can stick him over on this side of a slide and have it appear as though he's looking at the information that's on our slide. Sometimes it's nice to have photographs as the background on a slide. Now you want to do this sparingly. It's typically something that you would do on a title slide more than a title and content slide. So let's switch this to title slide. Uh, but one thing that you might want to do is fade out an image so that it can be used as a title slide. Typically this is something that you would do in the slide master, not in the slide itself. But for the sake of uh, example, I'm just going to show it to you in the slide itself. So one thing we might do is we might insert a shape, just a rectangle, and we're going to cover the entire slide with this particular rectangle. Okay, and by default, it's going to be blue because that's the default shape in uh, this particular installation of PowerPoint. So that's not very helpful for us. We've covered up everything. But what we can do now is we can right click and we can choose Format Shape. And now we have a lot of options for the fill and line. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the line around the outside of the shape. And now I'm going to adjust the fill. We have a couple of options here. I'm going to choose solid fill of white, and then if we start playing with the transparency, we can see uh, just how much of the flag that we want to come through on this image. So in order to make it still easy to read, I'm going to keep it at about a 15% transparency. So we get the suggestion of the flag, but we'll still be able to put text on top of it and have that work okay for us. So once I've got that set, I'm going to click on my transparency layer and I'm going to send it to back and that puts it behind my flag. So now I need to right click on my flag and choose send to back and that's going to put my flag behind the transparency layer and now I can add my presentation title over top of the flag and have it easily readable even in front of a graphic. So that's a nice way if you want to have a full size image as the background of a title slide or of a particular slide in your presentation, you can use transparency and shape to do that. Uh, it might also be nice if uh, I just want the part where the presentation title is to be faded out. So maybe I could take that shape and put it just over the presentation title, and that way we get a uh, a nice look at the flag but the title itself is still readable and we can still see the flag a little bit through that transparency layer. So you have a lot of creativity that you can do with layers and layering your graphics in PowerPoint. Here's another nice image. Uh, one thing that is sometimes nice to do and this is a really high resolution image so although I am stretching it I'm not stretching it beyond uh, 100%. You can sometimes just make an image bigger than your slide so that then you can position it. And if I look over here in my slide sorter, maybe I want more of the image to be focused on the sky or the wheat versus the rest. So I can uh, move this up and down since it's larger than the slide itself and get the horizon line where I want it to be on this particular image for the purposes of my presentation. One other thing that is uh, sometimes really nice to use in PowerPoint is what is called the Align tool. So one thing that's nice, sometimes maybe you'll have a, a number of images on a slide and you want them all to be lined up. So let's say I have this image of the man and I've got multiple copies of him. Maybe for some reason I want to have uh, a bunch of men across my screen. Well, 
you could spend hours fussing with your keyboard and clicking and dragging all of these men to try and place them out evenly across the screen. Or you could do it automatically by selecting all of the men. So if we select everything on the slide and then uh, deselect by holding down control and then selecting the text layers underneath everything. We can select all of our men, use picture tools, align to do all kinds of things. We can distribute them horizontally across the slide. Uh, that's across each other. So you have a couple of options here. You can align selected objects to each other, which means if you distribute horizontally, it'll go from the leftmost selected image to the rightmost selected image. Uh, or we can align it to slide. I want it to go across the entire slide. We'll do distribute horizontally. And now they're all the way across. Now I can maybe align them. Maybe I want them all at the same height. We're going to align middle. So now they're all in the middle. And what we're finding here is that these aren't aligning properly because the images themselves have a lot of white space in them. So I'm going to delete all but one of these guys, and I'm going to crop him so that the image itself is only as wide as the actual relevant picture of the actor. So I'm going to crop it. Now I can copy and paste this one. I have my six guys. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to do align to slide, distribute horizontally. Beautiful. Now I've got a nice um, cascading image of uh, a guy across my slide. I can also, uh, if I wanted to align them all in the middle so that they're all right in the middle of the slide, I can do that. I can align them to the top. Maybe I want to have a group of uh, three guys over here. So I'll click hold down control, select, select, select. Uh, but I want them to be much closer together. So I want the first one to be here and the third one to be right here, but I want them distributed evenly. So rather than selecting a line to slide, I'm going to align selected objects. And now when I distribute horizontally, they're just going to even out from the leftmost object to the rightmost object. You can also do um, you know, fun things with smaller images. I'm going to take some of these guys and make them much smaller by clicking and dragging from the corner so I don't mess up the rotation. All right, so now he's really small. I can do some aligning uh, distributing vertically. Let's see. I guess I need to select align to slide rather than align. Okay, so there we go. Align to slide, distribute vertically. Now I have a nice um, arrangement of guys. Maybe I want them all stacked on top of each other. We're going to do align mm, center. And now I have them stacked perfectly on top of one another. Uh, so the align tool can really help you get professional results so that your elements are aligned appropriately on your slide. So hopefully these few tools that I have shown you in PowerPoint will be helpful as you work to design effective presentations using graphics.